Mark, tripped over, turned beautifully there. Now, what's this bork? Oh, that was really magical stuff as he launched it. Sheldon downfield. No, umpire's call, play to halt. That was Madden against Madden. Free kick to Simon. And he goes with the hand pass to Hurd. Short pass. Baker, half-back flank. Straightens well. Bit of space. And balance to half-forward. Harvey. He's leading uh, Montgomery a merry dance at the moment. Not a good kick, though, but a bit fortunate. And the mark to Williams. A bit too far out to score. Danaher, one out with Dean. Open goal. Tony Olshaw, number 14. Ex-Melbourne player who's done very well in this strong side. He wasn't assured of a game at Melbourne. And he's much more assured at Essendon, so it's a great tribute to Tony Olshaw. Madden Brothers contest again. Justin wins again. Nagel boots it downfield. Underneath it, Baines. Oh, did he take it all? Roger Merritt, all oh, bang, did he go into trouble too? The tackle was high against Reed. Merritt takes the free kick and drives it out wide. Great kick to Dano. A perfect pass, Roger Merritt. This is a great faculty essence of got to get on with the game. Mark Harvey got his first goal while an altercation went on and everybody is looking and pushing and shoving he played on took a mark and kicks a goal that was a perfect piece of play by Merritt to Terry Danaher kicks beautifully he's a wonderful player number five the captain Terry Danaher but he's going to run a long way downfield and tell Roger Merritt you did most of that well done Roger Well, the Bombers in front. Essendon hit the lead by two points at the 19-minute mark in the first quarter. Justin beats Simon again. Folds to Hurd. Badly directed. And a mark to Baines. Mighty kick by Baines. McClure at the back, doing a bit of pushing again. And this time he doesn't get away with it. And the free kick goes to Weston. He was once again so skillfully in front. And so often out to Foles it goes. He goes off for 20 metres, goes another 10. Long run, well played Gary Foles. Downfield, underneath at Watson. Should have held that one, recovers very well. A brilliant hand pass to Elshaw. Elshaw downfield. Terry Danaher in position, but taken away nicely by Dean. Dean out wide. Road misses it, has time to recover, and back Blackwell's there too. Blackwell covers it nicely. Out wide he goes to Robertson. Boots it downfield. In front was Donnell. Nicely recovering is Meldrum. Meldrum will kick it for goal. Took a long while. In front, McClure. Oh, he nearly took a good one. Weston with the ball out to Hurd. And Hurd pushed it through. Fumbled it through. One behind. And Essendon kicking beautifully. Four goals. Carlton 3-4. That was an excellent play by Dean to foil Terry Danaher and follow up and get another kick up near the wing. Here's the kick by Donnell. In front, Simon Madden. Spoiled by brother Justin. Goes to Watson. Taking it the wrong way. Has a good look, but pops it high to Merritt with Baines. Merritt taps on for Danaher. Well done, Dean, again. Good football and a free kick, Peter Dean. That is well played. Dean at centre half back. Kick number three. Ignores the lead of Justin Madden and kicks out wide looking for road. Nagel's got the run on him. Gets a nice bounce. Turns and twists out of trouble. He will give it to Williams. Now he'll kick it long. Van der Haar's the target. Reed's with him. Reed spoils him. Well done, Roger. Merritt then boots it down. Danaher and Dean Danaher wins. Now it goes to Welsh for another goal. Terry Danaher. The perfect team man in a flash to Elshaw and a delighted Tony Elshaw <laughs> jumps into his arms as he should. 
for his own second goal. And Essendon, five goals straight, are leading Carlton 3-5. Tony Elshaw loves to belt that ball deep into the stand. It's an adoring showers pavilion stand he's been kicking to. And that ball might be gone. Now, back it comes. The two beautiful goals by Elshaw, and instrumental both times was T. Danaher. The Bombers, after a bit of a slow start, now leading by seven points. Simon Madden off the ground. Harvey stumbles. Oh, shrugs off Montgomery beautifully. Good kick from a standing start. Danaher again. This time Dean spoils him and the ball out in the forward pocket. Danaher unhappy with himself. He did have the position and had a great chance to mark near goal. Vanderhaar will be the ruckman against uh, Justin Madden, who leaps over the top of him by feet. Chance for Ashman, falling on at Sheldon. Out of bounds it is. Justin Madden has been absolutely dominant in uh, centre bounces and throw-ins. He's got feet above his brother Simon, and that time above Vanderhaar. Let's see if he can do it again. Not so clearly. Williams, left foot's for goal. It'll be close. Good smother. Nice hand pass. Sheldon. Sheldon Long out wide. Glenn Hawker. Well done, Scott Howell. David Reese jones brilliant. Onto his left foot. Left foot to downfield over the head of Wayne Johnston. And Hurd takes a clever, strong mark. And a 15-metre penalty against Wayne Johnston. They played on not knowing this. Kicked Long downfield. Underneath it, Scott Howell. Good mark. Howell at centre wing. McClure giving him a bit of movement up there. And it's a long kick in his direction. Great punch away by Donnell. Bad bounce for Williams. Goes to Road. Dropped it in the tackle. Play on, says the umpire. Sheldon, good kick. Bascott. Unmarked as Ashman up the ground, 25 metres. Oh, the kick a bit high. Giving Donnell a chance. And Donnell closes the gap. It's a bad kick by Glascott. Hartney up from defence. The hand pass anywhere. Rash, down they go. Play on, says the umpire. It's picked up by Howell, but under pressure. He bumbles it along the ground out of bounds and a throw in down towards the forward pocket. Howell's had a few kicks at centre-half forward in a tough position for one who's not played much senior football in the last 12 months. Then he comes to do battle with Simon Madden. Eventually picked up by Thompson. Very long. Your leap. Oh, the whistle has gone back behind play as Reed's still playing furiously. <laughs> and the crowd gives him ironical cheers. And the free kick is going to be played. And played to Shane Hurd, who once again has been an economical blocking player. Here he is with the ball now. Sent it long downfield in front Harvey. A great leap by Montgomery. Punches away from him. Out of bounds. Out of centre wing. Essendon, five straight goals. Carlton, three goals, five. And I think Carlton might rue that first quarter when they had eight scoring shots for only three goals. Through goes Alvin, but comes out without it. Watson, using a bit of body work. Free kick. It's to Alvin. To centre half forward and McClure with Weston. Weston again spoiled. Black will, uh, Johnston rather, tackle when he didn't have it. Play on. Hawker. Vanderhaar in front. It goes to Carey. He, whoa, he and Reese Jones. Carey didn't mind that, did he? Straight in. And they're coming from everywhere. Oh, Merritt charge into Baines. Reese Jones, in my opinion, started it once again. Well, there's only about half a dozen players who didn't get involved in that. And the book has come out. There's been a report by umpire Ian Robertson. And in a milling pack, I'm not sure. We'll have to wait till the end of the game to find out. Was it both players? Or just the aggressor? And who was the aggressor? Well, it's got to be a Carlton player, hasn't it? Or Van der Haar, the free kick, I guess.
15 meters against Reed. Nice. And this brings Van der Haar well within scoring distance. That's the difference between a goal square marking contest and six points. That was tough, wasn't it, don't you think? Yeah, I think it was. Oh, that tough. was really a tough decision. That was an unfair decision. And it is six points. No, oh, he just hooked it a little bit for one. Yeah, well, I think that's all it deserved because I think the decision was wrong. It's Peter Dean, the fullback. Tries to kick it short to Sheldon, does. Sheldon, awkward, still gathers it nicely. A hurried kick past Hawker. Awkward stuff for Hawker, did it pretty well. Look out, another one. Beat them all with pace. A lovely pass to Thompson. That was spectacular football by Hawker. Oh, there's Russo again, out to Williams. Williams long downfield, Roger Merritt in front. Terry Danaher almost took a good one. Oh, nice play over the line that time. I think it was Dean again, but whoever it was over the line, it was Hartley. Hand passing. And now Carlton coming out of defence, but a bit too quickly. The umpire's going to make them go back and do it all again. Hartney. Baines. Good mark. Spreads it through to Harms, who's just come on the ground. Harms from half back to Johnston, who hasn't had a kick. Heard with Robertson. Well played, Heard. Neagle's been very quiet. Carey, awkward bounce for him. Crashing went Johnston into his back, and the free kick to Steve Carey. Well, that was fumbled by Carey, too, and Johnston didn't need to give away a charity free kick. Carey down towards centre half or Justin Madden under, under, went underneath it. Baines is with it. Tries a short one and did it beautifully out to centre wing position which was dropped by Road in a flash to Ashman. Out to Sheldon. Sheldon centre wing on the outer side. Downfield looking for Scott Howell. Too wide. Still in. Still in. Yes, here comes Walsh. Walsh beat all of them then lost it. Two to one against him. Glasgow. Glasgow downfield underneath it to Nell Wilmart. Essendon leading by eight points. We've played four minutes of time on. Danger here. Hawker, bad bounce. Williams takes it away with Lightning. And a bad kick by him. The mark to Road, who's been a fine player. Only his third senior game. This is his first year of senior football. Inboard he goes to Sheldon, who's also playing his first senior game for the year. Long kick. McClure in front, outnumbered. Melbourne kicked the first goal of the game. Has hardly been sighted since. Finishes up with Weston. Baker. Oh, Black will do you mind. And the mark to Leon Baker. Carlton really going in with a lot of the tough stuff today. Get the team which has been their nemesis. It goes to Watson. Breaks through the centre. Out wide for Harvey. Great lead. But the kick a bit too wide for him. Great tackle, Harms. Holding the ball, Harvey. And the free kick to Wayne Harms. Harms is just the man who can handle Harvey. Exceptional ability is Wayne Harms. The Madden's up. Reese Jones was up there with him and couldn't hold it. It's out of bounds. Centre wing, out of side. Eight goals kicked in the quarter. We've had five and a half minutes of time on, so we can't be far from the siren. Sheldon wins the tap. Danell's hand pass goes to Baker. Harvey. Centering kick. Ooh, ugly leap by Baines. Harvey, a great hand pass to Elshaw, who kicks his third goal. Tony Elshaw. And punches the air. Top quarter for him. Well, the second half of that first quarter was the start of an avalanche. By quarter time, the Dons were in front by 14 points. In the second quarter, they kicked five goals to one to be six goals up at half time. Eight to one in the third quarter and eight to three in the last quarter. A 109-point victory. Essendon's biggest ever win and highest ever score against Carlton. Harvey kicked seven goals and Merritt five for the winners for Carlton, two each to Alvin and McClure. St Kilda approached its home game against Geelong with the enthusiasm of a top team rather than the gloomy attitude of a team at the bottom of the table. The Saints had reversed a disastrous start to the season and broken through for a win against Fitzroy on Anzac Day in a thrilling finish. And they faced up to Geelong, confident that they could make it two on end. Well, the match turned out to be a real thriller. 
The Saints led at every change, but could never sustain a winning advantage. We join it seven minutes into the last quarter. St Kilda seven points in front. Excited commentators Clark Hanson and Jeff Leake. He's limping. He's a key player with Jackson out. Um, we haven't seen anything of Linda today. I think he was taken off early in the game. He went off actually. We thought he had a cramp, so obviously he had more wrong with him. One point the difference. Ablett's fourth goal. Williams. Morewood. Cronin. Gets it down towards Ablett. Boss's kick out to Bruns. To Neil. That was good anticipation by Neil. Kick up forward. Couch. And also Fashini. Oh, I think Fashini would have been wise to let that ball go over the boundary line. And he does. There'll be a throw in left forward pocket for Geelong. Saints leading by one point. And plenty of time for a decision either way because uh, there's approximately 20 minutes to go. Cowie, the ruckman. Couch, backwards. A shot for goal by Bruns. Just missed. Is it? I'm sorry. Out on the full. And Hodges with the ball, one of uh, St Kilda's best players, kicks it in, side bottom, gets it down. Players just falling over. In fact, uh, that was Frawley who kicked the ball in. Hodges was there to uh, try and mark. There'll be a bounce. It's going to be a tough, relentless last quarter. Both uh, sides are pretty tight. Flanagan and side bottom. Oh, side bottom goes up, grabs the ball. Got nothing to do with it. Flanagan picks up, kicks short. Machini Nelly the mark, couch spoiled, runs, uh, kicks off the ground over the uh, boundary line, and there'll be a free kick. No, it wasn't Bruns. Bruns will get the free kick. It came off the boot of a St Kilda player, and Bruns is on the left half forward flank. The lead is coming from views. So to his uh, elder niece. The Bruns is going to drive the ball high. Look at the kick. It's a magnificent kick. But the uh, direction not there. Through from behind and scores a dead level at the 10-minute mark of the last quarter. In for a bit of fun on this final term as I just boot it back out towards side bottom. Scratch and Neil uh, got up well. Bruns to Flanagan. The big fellow looped a long handball over to a man on the flank. It's Couch, but he's shepherded for by Neil. Couch's kick. Ablett, can he get there? No, Frawley knocked it out of his grasp. Good play, Frawley. But the Cats are in front by one point. Hodges. Nelly didn't come off. Nobody there to put the pressure on, of course. Hodges is clearing kick. Burns. Neil. Kick not good. Hodges through his legs. Costly mistake. Reynoldson. Shoots for goal. Offline and through for a behind. Difference now, two points. It's amazing how the Cats are struggling away there and they're in front and they've got a couple of players who are well down on form. All the dice, a, a, a new player and Stephen Reynoldson uh, very much out of touch. Cunningham, down to Morwood, taps it out looking for a quicker player. All the dice now, not quite sure to do. Oh, he's put a player in trouble, it's Morgan. The Saints live again on the back line. Morwood, a good player. Michael Roberts, a fresh man in this quarter, coming around the members' flank. Puts a long one up towards the uh, half-forward flank. Cronin. Cronin gets it eventually. Strides away. No one leading. Gets a loose man. It's Burns. Burns and Tui. Burns tries to shake off Tui. Loses possession. Geelong picking up through Malarkey. Malarkey kicks it to a lead out there from Couch. Couch and Fashini is out. Marked him. Fashini's long kick now. Elferson by himself. Long players couldn't get back in time. He hasn't kicked the goal since the second quarter. He lays into it now. Bennett was the target. He was stopped from marking. The ball pushed through or behind to St Kilda. And Geelong hanging on by one point. Phew, what a finish this is going to be, Clark. Malaki, particular with his kicks, decides to go down the middle. Narkel. Narkel immediately plays on. Elphinstone. Oh, couldn't pull it in. There's nobody in support. Cabone is there. 
Oh, he was leg should get the free kick. He wasn't in that possession. And he will. That was desperation then by the Geelong defence. In fact, this last quarter is just one of desperation. And Frank Cabone, who hasn't done a great deal for St Kilda today, he's been uh, on and off the field. He's had uh, seven kicks. He's spent a lot of that time, though, uh, on the bench, the interchange bench. It's a difficult angle. Elphinstone with the lead. Cabone comes in. He's a right footer. Steers the ball towards goal. And he's put it through, and the Saints are back in front. Frank Cabone has kicked one goal, one. And that uh, goal, of course, as you just saw in this vital last quarter, to put the Saints back in front. Oh, the seven and goal. the crowd, look at them. Yeah. There's the man of the moment, Frank Cabone. He's kicked, this is his first year player, he's kicked six goals this season, none more important than that one, and side bottom gets to Markle. Markle's lifted in this final turn to Bennett and Yates. Burns chases after it, together with Alphonstone. Alphonstone and Shepherds allow Burns, he's a good 50 metres out, pulled off the shot. Frank Cabone gets it, swerves, didn't know what to do then, bit of pressure. Cabone again, for a plum. This is all right, it's Buse, clever play Buse as he weaves his way down the field, not a good uh, piece of delivery there. Oh, clever mark there to Idis. Across to Roberts, they swing it from one side to the other. Roberts about in the middle, gets it to centre half forward. Ball knocking the man running through his pattern. He swerves, it's deflected, gives Geelong a chance. It's four of them there. Good handball here to across to uh, Morgan. Morgan up the lane again, he dropped it, but plenty of time to recover. A short one to Neil. Neil, a star for Geelong, can give it to Morgan. Roberts is there. Neil has a shot for goal, and a pushing and shoving Ablett there again. Good play by Cunningham to fist the ball away from Ablett. And through four are behind. And Scratcher Neil has played his heart out yeah, for the Cats. Does not know how to play a bad game, a Scratcher Neil, a veteran in the Geelong lineup, and boy, he's just shown on the way. Got the ball, charged through the packs, got it out in front, out to uh, side bottom. Couldn't hang on to it. Hocking! Hocking, can he do it? No, he doesn't know, quite know what to do with it. Holding, a, holding across the shoulder, he'll get another shot, and fair enough, I guess we could see that, but the umpires have tended to really let play go this afternoon, uh, not a giving the advantage at all, or should I say giving the advantage at most times. So, Hocking. The position is St Kilda will lead by four points, 15 and a bit minutes final term. Hockey from about 35 metres out. Hasn't scored anything today. He still hasn't scored a thing. Wasteful football, Hocking. St Kilda get the free kick. I was going to say he's a back man, uh, Jeff. <laughs> That's the way he kicks them too, I think. <laughs> Cunningham the kick, runs, side bottom. Now don't do anything silly there, St Kilda. Mace came in there to push uh, Neil away. They could lose the footy if they're not careful, and the Saints can't afford to do that. Side bottom's 10th mark. A 15 metres penalty. Relieves the pressure for the Saints. Bennett. Cabone. Hocking into trouble. Yelling for a free kick. We're giving plenty of sound effects uh, here from the St Kilda side. Nicely Flanagan. Runs to Neil. Good football. Ablett's there. Cunningham right with him. Oh! Gary Ablett, you star! Ran forward, ran sideways, ran backwards, had the whole Jeff Cunningham out and tucked the ball under his armpit with the other. So he certainly can play footy. And I just don't know where Geelong would be without him this year. Considering the fact that uh, Geelong are having a, a shocking year and only won two games. Gary Ablett has kicked five goals, eight. But his last three shots have been goals. This might be another one. It is! 
And Geelong snatched the lead once more in this final quarter with about 10 minutes of play to go. It almost seems a, sh a shame that uh, St Kilda should lose this one if it's lost. I mean, there's plenty of football left. There's about another 11 minutes of footy left. Well, then again, it's credit to Geelong the way they've just fought back with sheer tenacity. Geelong by two points. Flanagan gets the tap. Roberts can't trap the ball. Flanagan tries to get it out to Williams. He was grabbed there by Morwood. And uh, umpire Mitchell comes in and says, I will bounce. Can the Saints come back? Side bottom is there. Grabs the ball. Gets slung to the ground. Morgan, the hand pass out. Faschini. Out of defence high. Cronin is the target. He's out hustled. Nice mark then by uh, Shane Williams. Set a half back. Can the St Kilda get back? 22 points down. Oh, Cunningham backwards. Straight. Oh, a sensational mark. Then backwards to Roberts. Then out to Morwood. Morwood's been a splendid player for them in the centre. Great handball. Oh, it's not. It went through two of the players. It squeezed past. Williams. Oh, Morwood. The man took it and tackled from behind. Morgan keeps the catch in it. Desperate tackle by Jeff Cunningham uh, on Lennigan. And the ball out of play. Another throw in. Saints half forward line. Side bottom. Push in the back and side bottom will get the free kick. Immediately plays on. Kicks towards the centre. I just running down with a kick. Not a good one. Marked there by Buse. Hughes can kick out wide. Looking there for Zickler. Zickler can't mark. He's played most of his football in the back line. Now he's up forward. Crawley was there with him. And there'll be a bounce between uh, centre of the ground. In fact, no, it's right up on the half forward line for the Cats. And they lead by two points. Final term. Eight minutes to go, I guess. Hughes kicks the ball high. There's a wrestle on. Crawley... He's letting it. Came off someone's shin. Doesn't matter who it was anyway because it's gone through for a behind. Three points lead to Geelong after St Kilda's led throughout the match virtually. Desperate football. The skills have gone. It's a two tired sides. Manning on now for St Kilda takes the mark. Immediately goes back. Kicks long. Williams is there, side bottom, nice mark under pressure. Hand pass in field to Hodges. Morwood, Hocking grabs him. Neil takes off, scintillating stuff. Scratch it on now, up to the half forward line. Gets around the player, then put down by Mace, but it was in the back. I thought, no, the umpire has seen it the other way. Could have been the player of the day and a disappointed Robert Neal. He did everything he could, but uh, let's take nothing away from Robert Mace, uh, a tough, fierce player. Wrenched him like a bear. So St Kilda live again. Mace from the back line to Morwood. Knocked away from Morwood. St Kilda need to pull something out of the bag now. Player held, not in possession. St Kilda player to McAdam. Hasn't he gone out of the game? Kick five goals up until half time and then it's been really and truly covered. Bolton, I think, has been the man chasing him. Made a big difference. Cronin's coming to it in this last quarter. He's a clever player. Tried too hard. Lost possession. Bust got him. Running through his bolt now. Across the middle. He's exceeding the speed limit. Picks the ball. Comes to Cowie. Bolt got the rebound. Throws it out. Lennigan throws it out. Roberts tackles him. Good football. Not flashy, but all the fighting qualities are there between both sides. It's a good game. It's a crackerjack game, uh, Jeffrey. And still Geelong hang on to that three points lead. Reynoldson hanging on and the free kick is going to Cowie. They've got to get it moving. Cunningham running past. Cowie fakes. Now he gets it to Cunningham. Reynoldson comes at him. Cunningham gets the short kick away. Shane Williams misses it. Can St Kilda capitalise side bottom. Burns. Elphingston not in front of Malarkey though. Malarkey. Shaw. Cool. 
Gets the hand pass away to Elvington, though, not so cool. Burns! Tackled by Greg Williams. Knuckle the chance. Grab threw the ball away. Burns, desperate. Oh, and we're on the half forward line. Force and kill that. And they're trailing by three points. Yep. Side bottom and Flanagan. Good play by Flanagan. Hocking. Morewood comes through. Williams is there. Cronin. And Williams dispute the football, and umpire Morrow says, "Old bounce." Oh, the umpires have had uh, the hands full. They've been uh, besieged by players around them all day. So one of beats uh, Fanning. Mace can't get it out. Then he does. The wrong player. Williams, a good player from Geelong. That's Shane Williams. Back to Fanning and on the Williams once more. Dribbles it up to the wing. Side bottom. Cool. Cool. Down his feet. Had a marvellous match, taking 11 marks, uh, side bottom. Running it inside bottom. Manning, Narkle, Ablett, who can kick a country kilometre, has a shot for goal, and he's off line through from behind. Well, Difference, like, two points. Well, the Saints a big chance to score because the ball is to be kicked out by Malaki. They can take... Uh, Control of it, or it's a long kick for Malaki. It's hitting the centre. Cowie. Reynoldson. Hughes. Geelong into attack now. It's on their half forward line. This is Roberts and Lenigan. Roberts is fresher than Lenigan. He came on on this last turn. Ward, a top player. Loses it though this time. Here's Couch for Geelong. I think if there's a fault with Morewood's game, he tends to hang on a little. Uh, too long but as he says uh, I tackled him on that one day after our footy show and he said well you've got to make sure you've got teammates around you before you get rid of it so there maybe that's the difference in uh, a top side in St Kilda he's got nobody in support fair enough well said Clark half forward line for Geelong Flanagan and Cowie Geelong have the running Andrew Buse been a good player clever over slice into full forward Cunningham Gary Abbott on one leg now after he went for that last mark and kicked his last goal, his opponent. Cunningham has played quite well. I don't care who they put on uh, on Abbott, uh, you find it hard to contain him. And Cunningham is a champion. That one went out on the full, so Couch for Geelong gets the free. Lead from Zickler, but Crawley with him. Couch. Kick to half forward. Reynoldson couldn't bring it down. Hodges, Morwood is there, Williams, clever hand pass to Bruns, play on says the umpire, it's a rainmaker, Shane Williams tries to get it, hand pass from Reynoldson out to uh, Neil, Neil chips it in short, looking for views, he waits for it, can he get around Hodges, the kick is there, Faschini out of defence, that's Yates, hand pass over the top, this is all Geelong, Lennigan, fought down, Morgan, snapshot for goal, offline and through for a behind. Of course, all this means, like as we've just entered the extra time period, that whoever kicks a goal, I think will win, unless it's going to be a long quarter, and I can't see that because it's been a low scoring quarter. So the ball back into play. Side bottom, his 12th mark. Played superbly. Down to the wing, and in front. Greg Burns tries to barrel out the back. Cronin short with it, but caught off balance. The prize decision was a good one then. Holds him off, balls it up. 27 minutes gone, final turn. The Cats lead by three points. There's the bounce. One last effort from St Kilda. Flanagan's in the way, though. Boss fumbles, recovers. He's under no pressure. Side bottom, lovely mark. Allen side bottom. Can give it to Roberts. Time is running out. Roberts the long kick. Bennett, Yates, Burns, Cronin, the fist of Boss. And Boss punched that ball out. That's what he's trying to do and uh, collected Cronin on the way. Forget the pain. Yeah, train indicating Cronin's okay. Way on, that's right. Planning on this time. Down to the rover. Morgan it is. Forward comes through. 
Roberts, who wants to kill this forward line, but only just. If they can kick a goal here, I think they can wrestle the game away from Geelong after the leading for most of the match. The ball up between centre and half forward. Side bottom, straight on to Flanagan. Bobbles it. Gets a handball. Shane Williams. Oh, he's still running. Must be on rubber legs, but he's put in a good one for Reynoldson. Carry with him. Roberts for St Kilda. Caught! Still gets a handball. The forward. They're running St Kilda. They might take it off here. Cunningham to Mace. Watch two wide for Ablett. Bennett fumbles badly. Lost control. The Saints lost their chance now. Cunningham cuts back into it. Markle. Cabo. Punch it to half forward. Oh, anyone can win it. A smart bowler, perhaps. Machini tries. He can't. Bop for Geelong. Desperate. Desperate. football. Congratulations the Saints and the Cats. Ball up 20 minutes out from St Kilda's goal and they're behind by three. There's the siren. The Cats weren't often in front during the match but they were in front when the final siren went and that's what counts a three point victory. Gary Ablett six goals eight. Two each to Buse, Lenahan and Morgan and for the Saints, five each to former defender Elphinstone and recruit McAdam. Greg Williams of Geelong reported on a striking charge, and that's one the Cats will be hoping goes in their favour too. Well, finally to VFL Park, almost 60,000 people, and Richmond named three former Collingwood players in their 20. Collingwood named three former Tigers in theirs. Both teams have started 1985 well and are looking for even better things in the future. Richmond got the jump, six goals to two in the first quarter for a 22-point break. At half-time, the Tigers by 26 points. We join it right at the start of the third quarter, and with me is Mike Fitzpatrick. Second half at VFL Park, and the Tigers lead by 26 points. Favourable bounce for the big Richmond skipper, Lee. Paul, a good first-half player, dispossessed. Burton off the ground. Egan, Rioli, took a long time, but finds McKenna within range. Now this will be interesting because this player was discarded by Footscray because of his inability to kick goals. And he now finds himself about 40 metres out. I feel he's not a good kick of the ball. This is his seventh kick of the match. And it's just offline. No, it's home. Take that, Bulldogs. McKenna's first goal of the match. And a great start to Richmond in the third quarter as they boot to a 32-point lead. Richmond started the game very confidently. Bit of a lapse early in the second quarter. But now proceeding as they started. By Howe bounces. Up goes Lee, just wins that one away. Dacos. Thought wasted at half forward last quarter. McBullen. Plenty of room. Looks for Richardson who marks. In front of Francis. Looks like he's going to have a shot. It's probably just within range. Awkward angle. Taken six marks. Had nine kicks at this stage. Most of them in the first quarter. Here's the shot. And as you can see by the goal umpire boundary umpire in the crowd, fails to register a score. Former Magpie, John O'Neill. A number of former Magpies now wearing the golden black. Didn't go over the mark, is the ruling. So, we we'll start all over again. Not a great kick, but it falls well. Jeff. from halfback. Landy. And the Tigers winning the ball a little too easily, I think, for coach uh, Rose's liking. Morwood foils Pickering. Rioli, beautifully. Egan. Pull off halfback. Lines them up. Great running football, Trevor Pull. And Richmond racing away from Collingwood. Six-plus goals, 
the margin 38 points it's certainly very aggressive at the ball in this game certainly every time they've kicked a goal they've celebrated it shows a strong spirit in the club today they've just looked a lot more lively than Collingwood to this stage of the match Cloak, I thought, won that. Dacos. Threading his way through, finding room where there really wasn't any. Taylor and Strawn struggle for it. Taylor, the run of the ball here. Nominal Shepherd. Runs through the ball this time. McMullen with a chance, but cleared by Strawn. Rioli. <laughs> Handballs between Malone's legs, but... The ball rolls out of bounds. And a throw in on the wing. Cloak and Lee. Ooh, down goes Aenea. Bouncing off Shaw's shoulder. Dacos in the action now. Reigns. Shaw through the centre. But those little half distance kicks aren't value for money at VFL Park. Francis. Pull. Rioli running into space, and the Tigers look dangerous. Well placed. James the flicker, pickering the hand passer. Back to James. Lead from Roach. Oh, great. Now Roach apparently going into hospital next week to have exploratory surgery on an injured knee. And he winced as he took that, and now he's flexing. Seven marks. Four goals. There's the contract. Never looked like it on that occasion. Perhaps the leg just worrying him in his kick that time. But it's all Richmond. Almost doubling the Magpie score. Dennis Banks. Out to the far side where Shaw is on the end of it and marks. Oh, and Cloak. Cloak ran over an ear, I think it was. McMullen. McMullen's been reasonably active. Let's put the ball into space. Where Brown puts it across. Ball now floating loose in Collingwood's forward line. Francis with a chance, but runs into Rioli. Gives Richardson a chance, but he can't take uh, advantage of it. Across to McKenna now. He's run down by Dacos, a good tackle. Sure, to Sumner. The free kick's been given. By umpire James, and will certainly go to Collingwood, to Sumner. It appears to be up from the back pocket. He's got plenty of room, passes to Reigns, who goes straight on with it, kicks it high towards Taylor. Taylor in front, but punched away by Strawn. Brown. Brown kicks it high, Barham at the back, but marked well by Francis. Very indirect play by Collingwood. No real method there, Rollings. Rollings to bring the ball down the centre of the ground. Straight to Egan, who marks comfortably. Well, he marked comfortably, he got a fairly uncomfortable right up that from Williams, not have to be 15 yards. Eager to take the kick. Very distinguished with the goatee, out to a near. Roach lurking dangerously at full forward. He's the target. Banks left hopelessly in his wake. This time, Roach must much closer. Will kick from 30 metres out. As good as directly in front. Umpire James uh, has other ideas about that. He wants to put him on a, an angle of sorts. He's kick or 15 metres. 
Daycross lurking close to the man on the mark. And Roach will now kick from the edge of the square. Yes, I, I really thought the 15 yards could have come from Banks when he uh, landed on Roach earlier. And uh, I suspect umpire James was looking for a reason to, to give one. Unusual. Magpie's not too happy, but uh, there isn't a more respected man in white these days than Glenn James. Roach drives through his fifth. And it's becoming a cakewalk for the Tigers. They're in front by 45 points. Thirty-seven for the year for Michael Roach. Back in the spot he so likes full forward. And he's certainly justifying that. More with his new opponent. This has taken a while to make that move. Bounce favours Cloak. He misses the punch. Oh. Rioli gets the ball away cleverly, but uh, it's still available. Off the ground from Shaw. Jep in the, in the race for it. Unable to really use it. Eustace soccers it out on the full. And be a kind of kick. A little bit more time than that, Eustace. Poor kick from Smith. Straight to a near. Rioli to Lee. Lee, long kick down the centre of the ground. Roach at the back. And Roach juggling for position with Morwood. Morwood appeared certainly to be better placed. But Roach, with a late leap from behind, takes his ninth mark. Five metres out by the time he kicks one. Deliberate shot. Six goals to Michael Roach, Richmond 14-7. Collingwood 6-4. Collingwood yet to fire a shot in this quarter. In more ways than one. 38 for the year to Roach. Barring injuries, he must be well on the way to a century. So four goals in 11 minutes to Richmond in the second half, and the Tigers have turned this match into uh, a one-way traffic jam. Lee against Cloak. Eads kick smothered. Reigns pressured by Rioli. Had equal possessions, but uh, I feel Rioli's been far more effective. Richardson steamrolling pull. And an obvious free kick to a very effective defender. He kicked a goal early in this quarter to start the avalanche. And here. 15 against Dacos this time. And another one. So Ania in attack now. Looks for Roach. Egan. Rioli. Sumner. Desperate lunge. Shaw. Beers. But under pressure. Ede. McKenna. Gutsy little player. Good tackle by Shaw, wins the free kick. Shaw on the wing for Collingwood. Up there looking for Richardson, but Francis punches the ball away from Banks. Bad mark from Banks, stood his ground, ball dropped in a bit short. Now Richardson. Looks away by Ania. 
Richmond defence looks a lot tighter. Lee and Taylor both using their body. Taylor wins it. Banks runs the ball on the boundary line, but it'll go out. Ooh, quite happy to see it go out. Lee this time. And he takes a kick. It didn't seem to be that serious an offence, but certainly that's what was given. Poole really dominating at that set of back position. Half forward for Richmond. Whiteman now. He'll have time to look for Roach. It's short. Burton. Burton still with the run of it. Lost it now to Morwood, but he's lost it to Ania. He gets a handball across to McKenna. McKenna with plenty of time. Goes long. Williams on the end of it, but fails to hold it. Picks it up now. Lead offering from Shaw. On the members' flank, and he marks. And Landy will certainly be picked up 15 yards, and a few weeks ago would have been reported. He's now penalised a further 15 metres. Well, if the umpires allow that to happen, we're really back at square one. We are back at square one. Richardson. Collingwood behind square one at the moment. Trailing by 51 points. Looks for Taylor. Strawn. Right on top. And the two uh, key Richmond defenders, Strawn and Paul, have been superb. Shaw. Sure. Courageous mark. Paul Reigns. Gone. Shaw. Sure. High kick. Francis. Banks, the interceptor. Dacos on the wrong boot. Lines them up. And what a kick. Just offline. So dangerous, though. You need to be Collingwood standing Richmond up 50 points. Strong looking for a lead. All the players in the centre of the ground. Now there's one from Lee. Lee and Cloak still playing a long way from each other. Both getting a lot of kicks, but uh, on balance, it'd be hard to say which was the better player. Drop by Landy. Barham's in there, but he can't do much with it. Pool. Looked like Sumner again out to Richardson. To Cloak, who wants the handball rather than kick. Short pass over to Taylor now. Taylor Marks. Taylor Marks. About 30 metres out. Only his third. And it'll be his fourth kick. But he marked because he was in front for one of the few times in the match. And he led. Richmond have been very successful in closing down the space in front of Brian Taylor. But one also gets the feeling that he could have made a few more leads just to give them something to kick at. Taylor's second goal. He really did uh, drift that one in very quietly, but his second goal takes Collingwood to 7-5. Richmond 14-7, 91 plays 47. Only three players have kicked goals for the Magpies. Sure sign that they're in trouble. Seventeen minutes it's taken Collingwood to kick a goal. Umpire James almost flattened by Waitman. Reigns, good play. Short. In a hurry, Barham. Lead into space by Richardson. No one on him, and he drives it through. Some belated resistance from the Magpies, and there was more to come in the last quarter but it was too late. In the final term, Collingwood reduced the deficit from 46 points to 18. Michael Roach kicked six goals and Stephen James five for the Tigers. For the Magpies, Taylor booted four and Barham and Dacos three each.
and the Tigers really rolling after a slowish start to the season. Collingwood's biggest setback so far, the Magpies' worst loss for the season. It's only other one coming against Essendon in a thrilling finish. Well, Melbourne suffered a major setback against North Melbourne at the MCG going down by a point. The Roos snatching their second miraculous victory to win by the narrowest of margins. Five goals to Ryan and for the losers, Brian Wilson kicked another seven. He's in great form. And at Victoria Park, Hawthorne always in control against Fitzroy. The Lions still haven't won in their new den. Knights and Matthews each kicked four for the Hawks and Bernie Quinlan kicked six for Fitzroy. The round will be completed up in Sydney today. The Swans at home to Footscray and the Bulldogs were on top of the ladder going into the round. They've lost top spot owing to uh, a big percentage boosting win by Essendon. Perhaps the Bulldogs can get back on top in Sydney today. And looking at the table, Essendon with 20 points, five wins and a loss and a very good percentage now. Footscray uh, falling nine behind percentage wise but can join Essendon up there in the top two positions. Richmond and Collingwood safely in the five. Hawthorne in by percentage only from Melbourne, North and Geelong. Then a game's break to Carlton and the Swans who can improve with Fitzroy and St Kilda sharing the bottom berths. The goal kicking table, Michael Roach nicely clear, another six. Brian Taylor kicked four and Brian Wilson doing very well at full forward, kicked seven for a total of 30. Bernie Quinlan lying fourth with a bag of six. Beasley plays today, Gary Ablett kicked six goals. Mark McClure got two, Jackson was out. Brereton and Dacos each kick three. And looking ahead to next week and round seven, five games on the Saturday at VFL Park, a big test for North Melbourne against Essendon. The game of the day at the MCG between Richmond and Footscray, Collingwood and Fitzroy, the Victoria Park co-tenants, Geelong at home to Melbourne and Hawthorne to St Kilda with Carlton going to Sydney for the Sunday match. Well, still more sport coming up uh, today on ABC Radio and Television. A live exclusive broadcast brought to you by Mazda, makers of reliable commercial vehicles. To Richmond and Collingwood, initially it was the Tiger Cub showing the way with Stephen James, the first goal of the match. A minute later, he does it again. Fire at the goal, not a bad sort of a kick either. Look at this one. Oh, what a player this fellow is. But then three bounces, and back come the pies through Dacos. He's got a paddock to run in. He can nearly run down and kick a goal if he goes for the long shot he has. And that's just a, not a bad sort of a kick either. It's a goal. Back to the Tigers at the back. back. It's that James Boy again. In the first quarter. It's close. It's there, I think. Another one. Taylor again. Here He's Taylor battles back well back. for a magpie goal. He goes down. He's after it again. Now's the chance for a snap at goal. There's the shot on its way. Not a bad sort of a kick. It's his first. A beautiful bit of play on the part of Taylor. At the other end of the ground, it's, it's Michael Roach off hand. Now the old stager and the young stager, Cloak and James. Richardson. Down he goes from Lee. When is a mark a mark? That's a mark. With that up, oh, what was the mark? Carlton and Essendon. Carlton now, winning the toss. To the Bombers and the Blues, the misfortunes the of David Rhys Jones. Did you not agree? Oh, Rhys. And Carey. Now look at Roger the Dodger come in. I don't think his tractor's been stolen. I don't think one could blame Rhys Jones on that occasion, Sandy. With, uh, and he had an interesting and, uh, afternoon with Glenn Stone. Hawker too for a while. by Carey. Straight, Rhys Jones, the fierce Not tackler. consistent, Sandy. If you free kick the player out here. Now, Some fierce tackling going on in the game Watson, yesterday, particularly by the Eston side. Like a pork chop behind the play as the kick goes down towards the forward line. <laughs> Holding the man to Rhys Jones. The man got to do to get a free kick. Bob Skilden calling for the Harvey free kick. Nevertheless, play went on. And it was Mark Harvey, the youngster the up forward for the Bombers, who really let Harvey loose yesterday. And well done. So he should pick at his goal. Almost scooped it back for you. Now, Danaher. Danaher showing all his skills. Gives it to Harvey. Brushing Ashman aside. Harvey on the boundary line. Here's the dashing Dons. Williams and Watson combined. Here they go. Timmy Watson can draw the player, then fire towards goal. Oh, thank you, Timmy! 
one able to take it cleanly. Dean overruns. And here's Mark Harvey Harvey's again. Over the top as he going to squeeze it. He squeezed it. Six goals to the youngster. And the Bombers can do no wrong. Aaron Williams, here he goes. No, to they were on fire. Tonight. No, Williams, Mark, Watson and Harvey. Says, no, Merritt's no, in the no, square. Roger. Does it so easily. Does. How easy is that? Well, let's go to the action between the Cats and the Saints. Here's Lenahan first up for Geelong. Ablett. Made the mark, but Joffa Cunningham finds it difficult to believe. Manning. Burns. One of the real motivators for St Kilda. Great performance, but the Saints couldn't quite pull it off. Now, some interesting behind the play action here, as you can see there. Down goes Nettlefold, and we'll let you be the judge. No report. And play went on. Quinlan collides with Marks. You heavy knocks yesterday. Conlon and Morris. And of course, Mick Conlon having to front up the tribunal on Monday night. Osborne and Ede collide. Here's the Knights of old. Peter Knights back in action. Four goals yesterday. Now Melbourne and North, plenty of thrills in the final term. Did he put his foot through, asked Peter McKenna. Well, you be the judge. Here's Alan Johnson of Here Melbourne come the Melbourne demons, though, in the last quarter. Alan play. Johnson had a great day. A They're just one goal down now. Oh, Melbourne coming right back. A chance and believe it or not, Batterston levelled the score so with this goal uh, point. Has he missed it now? I thought he'd missed that, Pete. Well, it's some three oh, feet almost like to, to the left-hand side of the goalpost. I thought, he, I thought he missed it too. The umpires made a mistake. And did it make the Jack Dyer unhappy? Has made one of the worst blunders in history here. Himself up high as Ryan. Here's the last 20 seconds of the game and the very weary legs of North skipper Wayne Shimmerbush carry his side to victory. He's put it through. Shimmerbush has put it through for North Melbourne. North Melbourne back in by one point on Sevens Big League. Three goals to Wayne Shimmerbush. Oh, and Iron! North Melbourne with a Princeton again. They've done it again. They beat Calvin in the same fashion as they beat Melbourne. Sensational finish by North Melbourne. The winner, though, of our Mazda footy... The mark of the year for 1985 will win a luxury Nissan Pulsar GX hatch. There's never been a better small car than Pulsar by Nissan. And first up, Richmond's Graham Landy. Nothing wrong with that mark. Collingwood's Mark Williams. Close to the boundary line, trying to find Eustace. Williams over the top. Side of half forward. Essendon's Terry down. Danaher. One, two grabs. He's got it. He goes on to the left foot. His up teammate, the half Paul line. Vanderhaar. Paul oh, Vander! One-hander! Lifted beautifully. Carlton's Wayne Harms. He will wait at the back. And coming in from the side to take a courageous mark. In. Forward line, a long North Melbourne's kick. Brendan Ryan. Oh, look at that mark! It's kicked down there by His the teammate, Jim, Jim Cracker. Cracker. What a mark! Some Melbourne's John Fish. Coaching all the time. There's, oh, there's a great mark there. Taken in defence there by John Finch. St Kilda's John Bennett. His teammate, Alan Sidebottom. Geelong's Gary Ablett. St Kilda's Andrew Manning. Another one from John Bennett. And now Robert Elfenstein. For Hawthorne, Dermot Brereton. Another one from Dermot. And completing our marks, fittingly to Peter Knight.
to our panel headed by Bob Davis. Well, what do you think about those, Kevin? Well, I can't believe it that uh, Gary Ablett... Uh, well, he's only won. Only won. He generally has about three or four. But uh, that was some of the best marks we've seen, Bob, this yes. year. Yes. Uh, Manning was an excellent mark. So was Graham Lannies of Richmond. But uh, I thought Brendan Rhines was a classical mark for North Melbourne. And crackers, just before I go to you, I see in this book that you got the greatest bluffers. Sam Newman's only number three. Oh well, had to sort of let him off. But what uh, about the mark? I, like, I like I like Manning's mark. I see. I had a look at it, and I like Johnny Fidge's mark. But uh, Ryan, very good. Well, I thought Van der Haas was a magnificent mark, but. Really, the mark of the day was Brendan Ryan's, and Brendan for his mark as we see him going again. If I am Holden. Some pretty good goals yesterday. Here's the first from Peter Dacos of Collingwood. He decides to go for a bit of a run. He's got a batting to run in. He can nearly run down and kick a goal if he goes for the long shot. He has. And that's just a, not a bad sort of a kick either. It's a goal. Long kick. His Looking teammate, Taylor Brian Taylor. Taylor. He's got his hand, but couldn't hold the mark. Mark, he goes down. He's after it again. Now's the chance for a snap at goal. There's the shot on its way. Not a bad sort of a kick. It's his first. A beautiful bit of play on the part of Tate. Richardson. And Ricky Barham. Snap shot not there. Barham gathers it in well. Goal! Oh, he oh. Line for them. At the back Peter Dacos again. The punch down at Dacos. Balked beautifully. A chance for a goal. It's on its way. And it's a goal. That's his second. Out to Essendon oh, now. Williams, Williams gives it to Tim Watson. Here they go. Timmy Watson can draw the player, then fire towards goal. Oh, thank you, Timmy! Take now his teammate, one. Mark Dino Harvey. Runs it. Harvey over the top as he going to squeeze it. He squeezed! Left foot, he goes Russell down Richards of Melbourne. Forward. Over the back is John Moore. Oh, Russell Richards, beautifully done. Swings away from goal, fires at the goal. Beautiful goal kicked by Russell Richards for the Demon. And his teammate, Brian Wilson. Oh, Wilson's taken it away from Passmore. Into the open goal he goes. He runs and he's put it through. Stephen Second one on from ground. Russell Richards. Oh, look at this. Take it away. Shot at goal. Done as he knocks North it Melbourne's the Jim Cracker. Oh, have a look at that. That was magnificent football, Jimmy Cracker. Oh, sensational football. Oh, now Dennis Lenahan for Geelong. Well, for St Kilda, first up, Greg McAdam. His teammate, Robert Elfenstein, over the top. And now Greg Burns. Bouncing his way out of the centre. A couple of bounces, a long run, steadies and fires truly. Still with St Kilda, this time Phil Cronin. Let's finish with three from Fitzroy. Firstly, Bernie Quinlan. This one from Michael Conlon. And this one from Mick Conlon. To our panel, headed by Peter McKenna. Well, Kevin, what do you like? Well, I like three uh, goals, Peter. I like Brian Taylor's. So I thought that was an excellent one. Falling to the ground, not taking the mark and then snapping. Not one of the uh, way you generally think Brian Taylor will get goals. I like Peter Dacos's, excellent, and uh, Jimmy Crackers. But I'm going for Brian Taylor's. Crackers? I like Russell Richards, and uh, I like Bernie Quinlan's a snap over, but I, uh, I didn't mind Brian Taylor's. He's on the ground and battled. Well, I'm delighted to give it to Brian Taylor. He's six foot four and about 15 and a half stone. Have a look at this as he dropped the mark. He went in after it again, kept his eyes on the ball, it tackled there, grabbed in fact by Strawn. Could have even been holding the man. Went on after it, picked it up, had a quick look Save at it. Over the, the 30,000, Pete. Well, put back into play again.